library friends. My name is Ms. Hester and I will be presenting this summer's summer game programs. They will all be virtual and we'll have one each month for the months of June, July, and August. And what I'll do is I'll just present some ideas or share some ideas of different games. Um, you won't have to pick up a packet or anything like that. You can just view our program through our website, wadsworthlibrary.com, or you can check out some of our um, social media channels, YouTube or Facebook, and access it that way. And then you can watch, get your ideas, and then hopefully have some fun playing with friends or neighbors or cousins or family um, on your own at home. Since this is our first month doing a game, Summer Games, program, I thought that we could begin by kind of upping the ante or um, raising the stakes for your competitions at home by making a trophy. So um, it's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is find some recyclables or old toy pieces, things that you have around the house, and get your idea, maybe plant it on paper first if you want to. Um, so I thought that I would use this empty jar. I rinsed it out and um, I was going to put this little figure on top, um, maybe use hot glue with a parent um, or an older sibling. I might even spray paint it first, um, gold or another color, just to make it a little bit more trophy-like. Um, glue it on there. And then I actually thought of the phrase, to the victor goes the spoils, which means the winner gets the goods. So um, that's what I would do for my trophy. And it might be something that you might um, pass around in the family if you're just playing um, with your immediate family. So whoever wins maybe could get that at their place um, at the dinner table, or maybe it's something as simple as a paper crown or really whatever you'd like to do just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting and competitive if you want. And if not, that's fine too. You can just go ahead and play some games and have fun together. All right, so let's get started with our theme this month is snack attack. So I hope you're not hungry um, because by the end of this um, show, you certainly might be. Um, let's get started with our first idea. And I thought of some different types of snacks that we have. And these, obviously, we call cookies. But we are learning about things around the world this summer with our summer reading program, which we certainly hope you've signed up for. And if you were to visit England, they don't call these cookies. They actually call these biscuits. So we're going to do a few games with biscuits first and then move on to our other um, categories. So the first idea is to go ahead and just take a bunch of biscuits or cookies, if you'd prefer, and stack them up. Maybe set a timer for 30 seconds or a minute if you have some younger um, kids who have a harder time manipulating the cookies and set your timer and see if you can build something. Oh, and it needs to stay up. So mine didn't last, but hopefully yours will. Um, and then whoever gets the tallest tower without falling over in those 30 seconds or minute is the winner. Um, and then another game with cookies, um, you might have seen this before, you get one cookie, you place it on your face, like on your cheek or on your forehead, somewhere on your face, and then you have to wiggle your face, scrunch your nose or move your cheeks and try to maneuver it down into your mouth. And whoever gets that cookie or biscuit into their mouth is the winner. Um, so I hope those are some fun ideas you can use with cookies or biscuits. All right, our next category is kind of like salty or savory treats, okay? So these here in the US, we would call them chips, potato chips. But if you were in England, you would call them crisps. So you might wanna play a game kind of like categories, if you've ever played that before, where you make a list of different categories or topics, and I'm gonna call it snackergories just because it sounds fun. Um, and I have a few lists of ideas here that you might um, write down a breakfast food or a pizza topping, the name of a fast food restaurant, a beverage, and I even have down here a brand of crisps, like these here. Um, so once you have your list, you can come up with the list together with your neighbors or your friends or your family. Then you're gonna roll a die. If you have a die, a die with letters on it, or if you have a game like this one, we have Bananagrams, and we have these letter tiles, maybe Scrabble or something else that you have at home that has letters, then you'll pick a letter Ooh, letter I would be hard. Let's try another. Letter P. And then you'd go through and, again, set a timer, one or two minutes, depending on um, what age range you have. And you try to find things um, for each category that starts with that letter. And try not to duplicate someone else's answer, because then you'd have to cross off the answer. Okay, so that's one idea for our crisps category. And then another, and this might get kind of messy, so you might want to do it outside. What you'll need is um, a person or a partner, which I don't have, so this bowl is going to stand in for that person, and a shower cap. So the shower cap goes on the head of your partner, all right? 
And then you're also gonna need some shaving cream. And I guess Cool Whip, or, or not Cool Whip, um, whipped cream could also work, but it might get a little melty if it's super hot outside. And you're just gonna squirt some shaving cream all over. That's why I said this might be a good one for outside. All right, just enough so that it's kind of covered. All right. And then you're gonna get some of these, not crisps, but cheese puffs, some kind of little cheese balls, something like that. And you're gonna, you and your partner are gonna stand a certain distance apart. And then, can you guess where I'm going with this? You're gonna toss the cheese puffs into the shaving cream. <laughs> Hopefully you don't hit your partner anywhere in the face. They might get a little cheesy on this one. Okay, and again, set your timer for a minute or two. And whichever team has the most cheese puffs stuck to the shower cap is the winner for that round. And you can play that a few times if you want to and change who's throwing and who's doing the catching. Um, that's kind of a fun one, I thought, if not a little messy. All right, and then our last category that I have was candy in American English, but in England, they call them sweets. So sometimes, sometimes they're called sweets or lollies if you were to visit England. And I, we hope that you'll join us for our England program um, later this month. And we're also going to visit China. So I brought something that's necessary for eating in China, some chopsticks, okay? And you're gonna get some sort of candy. Here I have some mini marshmallows because I thought those would be pretty easy. They're soft and easy to pick up. But you can use, if you wanna challenge yourself, get something smooth or glossy or round, and that will make it even more difficult. Um, but what you're gonna do is set your timer, and then you're gonna use your chopsticks to pick up your marshmallows and transfer them from one plate to another. And you might be an expert at chopsticks or you might be a beginner, but it'll be fun either way. And see how many of those you can move over. Okay, so those are my ideas. Um, I'm getting hungry just talking about all this snack food. Um, and then we also have some books in our collection. Over here we have some stuff about cupcakes and peanut butter, and we have some ideas about recipes from around the world that you can try different snack foods. So that might be another fun idea. Um, if you're done playing your games and you wanna try to, uh, snack food from around the world, you can do that. Um, and then lastly, I had this simple idea for maybe if we have one of those rainy days in the summer and you can't go outside and play, you can play a game of tic-tac-toe but instead of tic-tac-toe using X's and O's, you could use some, some pairings of food. So I have biscuits and milk or cookies and milk, eggs and bacon, and some peanut butter and jelly. So that goes well together in America, but other places of the world, they don't eat peanut butter and jelly. So you might even research and find some other pairs um, from different countries that you learn about and say, well, what two foods do they eat? They go together and you can play some tic-tac-toe using those foods instead. But we do really hope to see you um, coming in and reading around the world with us this summer. Um, have fun reading, have fun playing, and take care, my friends. Bye.